then we need to get about being stronger and smarter for the future and realize that this world is not safer when the United States of America appears to be weaker. This world is more dangerous when our country appears to be weaker. And we can never let that happen. And some of our colleagues here in the United States uh, need to learn that. This is going to be not a war of bombs. This is going to be a war of will, a war of will that we have to win over whatever period of time. now with the immigration bill. <clears throat> People say it's dividing our party. Um, I think to a certain extent that's right. I don't think it'll always be that way. I think we got to have our honest disagreements and honest opinions and then move on. Some very good friends of mine is on the other side of this from where I are, are on the other side of this from where I am. Uh, that's all right. We're adults. Let's, uh, let's air our views and decide what's best for this country. The bottom line is not what's best for one party or another, or who's going to get the most votes when the dust settles. The bottom line is what's best for the strength and the long-term endurance uh, of this country. Uh, and this immigration bill is not it. <clears throat> We're going to have all kinds of issues. You're going to have issues, as you read history, you, you realize the things that people going into an administration think that they're going to be having to deal with. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. But for sure, there are things that crop up that you don't foresee that you're going to have to deal with. And the question is, what are your underlying principles? Uh, what do you believe in? Anybody can talk from a, a, a mental checklist of talking points. What do you really believe in? Where are you coming from? I say get back to first principles. I say that the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States are not outmoded documents. <laughs> bankrupting our government. We're bankrupting our country. We're bankrupting our economy. I don't hear enough talk about that, if anybody. With the spending habits that we have got and the glad path of our entitlement programs, including health care costs, a big chunk of that, everybody's got some idea, but nobody's really doing anything about it. The president tried to do something, uh, take a first step on Social Security, dead on arrival in Congress. Then they pulled back, and that was the end of that. We can't do that as American people. We as a generation cannot sit here and do things that are going to hamstring this next generation with absolutely unbearable tax burdens when they're out there trying to buy, get married and, and, and buy that first home and have that first child. Get into a situation where you got one generation against another with an elderly, growing elderly a population that uh, the working fewer uh, young people can't sustain. We can do some things now that doesn't really hurt anybody. If we don't do something over the next few years, we're going to get into a situation where we're going to have to do some things that hurt everybody and hurt our economy. And the economy lies under everything else, even national security. And we've got to remember what we're about what we believe in. This spending thing, you know, I think that uh, it's absolutely correct. People talk about the last election. They say the war, the war, the war. I think it had more to do with corruption and spending than it did the war, and it's understandable. 